Hi, travelers. Sophie Takagi Kaner here. I hope that all of you are staying safe and at home if it is possible for you to do so. And for those of you who can't, thank you for keeping the rest of us safe or just keeping yourself and your family going. A couple of announcements for those of you who do not follow us on social media. First of all, because our recording studio is closed and some of our cast lives in locked down areas, we will not be able to continue recording in our usual manner, which means that after this episode and the following two, which were recorded previously, have been released, the penumbra will be going on a brief hiatus. But notice that I said brief. We will be picking the show back up as soon as we can. In fact, we already have plans for how to make that possible. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. Also, in order to build community and hopefully keep people feeling creative, even if they're stuck at home, Kevin and I are running a free fiction writing workshop series, which we are streaming live on our YouTube channel on Saturdays at 2 p.m. EST. If you'd like to catch up, the recording of the first live stream is up on our channel. One more thing. Though escapism works well for some, this episode, like the last, will be addressing some dark themes. So if you are feeling understandably sensitive to that right now, I'd recommend listening to this one at a time when you feel you're up to it. We struggle on, travelers, and we do it together. Be safe and be well. Ah, good evening, traveler, and welcome to the Penumbra. Tonight's tale is... Juno Steel and the Shadows on the Ship. You're not giving us anything to go on here, Steel. Well, I'm trying, all right? Are you? Because you haven't answered a single one of my goddamn questions. They're bad questions. Les McCutter. Sure. And I don't know the answers to your dumb questions, all right? I don't buy that for a second. Ransom's in debt. I know he's in debt, a lot of it. And that makes me think it's a dangerous kind of debt. The kind that makes you desperate. He owes a lot of money, yeah, but I don't Who's think Who's he owed then? I don't know! He won't tell me! He says it's too... Too dangerous? I know how that sounds. Then you should know why I can't let this go! Liars. Here. So you don't know who he owes, Steel? Fine. But he must have brought some cutting-edge gear with him, huh? Maybe something that lets you go into space without a suit? I don't know. He hasn't shown me any super-secret thief stuff, but I didn't exactly ask, and it's not like I invited him to go searching through my bags either, all right? I don't buy that for a second. You're in his room for hours every night. You never took a peek. To be honest with you, Vespa, we're kind of busy with something else when I'm in there. That is true. I've heard it many times. Okay! First of all, not what I meant. Second of all, that's not funny. It's not a joke. The walls of the carte blanche are very thin. I cannot hear the details. Well, that's generous of you. But you could be a more considerate neighbor. Mucilage. <laughs> Here. All right, fine. I'm sorry if we, you know, too loud, but this isn't exactly the best time to bring it up, big guy. My apologies. I did not know that the poetry you and Ransom write for each other was intended to be a secret. Oh, barf. It is not poetry. And we get loud because we're just trying to communicate things with each other. Normal things, because he has nothing suspicious going on, and if he does, which he doesn't, I don't know about it, okay? Fine, Steel. I don't buy a word of that, but fine. There is one thing about Ransom you do know, though. His real name. What? You knew Ransom before any of us did. You obviously have to stop and think for a second before you say his name. All that makes me think you know him by something else. And from how closey closey lovey dovey you two have gotten so quickly, I'm willing to bet you know his name. Hmm. So what is it? What's it matter to you? Vespa and I are veterans of crime, Juno, and from very different circles. It is highly likely that one of us has heard of Ransom before. Big guy, come on. No. You come on, Steel. I don't think you get how a criminal career works in a galaxy-sized arena. Your name's all you have. Every job is high risk, high reward. Nobody wants to take a chance on some crook they've never heard of because one slip up and you're behind bars or dead. Reputation is everything. It is how a crime boss decides if you are skilled enough, if you are reliable. And your bunk buddy Ransom threw his out. He lost a lot when he did that, which means it must have been worth a lot to him to do it. Yeah, clearly. So why don't we just leave well enough alone? Because nobody can cut off their past deal. Nobody. 
and Solani's ransom was reliable, maybe Buddy could live with that. But now we've got good reason to be suspicious, and the time for secrets is done! No criminal likes their past, Juno. None of us wants to be tied to everything we've done, but insisting everyone show their hand is how we keep ourselves safe. <laughs> Steel squirms in his skin for a second, and I can already tell what his answer is going to be. Good luck with that, Vespa. He's in my net, and you'll never get him to betray me. Sometimes paranoia pays. Sometimes worrying obsessively about something just makes you more prepared for it. Some things, though, some things are so rough that nothing can prepare you for them. Not really. She's mine too, Vespa. You're alone. All alone. And you'll never get Buddy back alive. My name is Vespa Ilkay. I think I'm almost done with this line of work. Where some days I'm a doctor and some days I'm a homicidal maniac. But I'll give it one last night. And which way I'll fall depends completely on how Buddy is when we find her. And whether Steel bothers to help. You'll have to ask Ransom later, then. There might not be a later, Steel! Well, it isn't my secret to hand out, alright? All I know is he asked me never to tell it, said it was really important, and I agreed. Maybe that was dumb, but I did it and I'm not backing down, so ask him yourself. <sighs> You're making a big goddamn mistake, Steel. You don't want me as an enemy. You're right, I don't. Listen, Kuliak, you've got to talk some this sense. This discussion will have to wait. I've sealed the garage door shut. That should give us enough time to finish our preparations. Juno will keep watch by the door. Vespa, you will help me build the trap. Let us begin. I keep an eye on steel while we work. Dark shapes crawl all over the corners of my sight, but so long as I can stay focused on Steel himself, can see if he reacts to any of them, I can know what to worry about. About an hour ago, after we all saw Ransom standing on the nose of the ship, Sekuliak brought us to get the blade out of storage. We needed it, he said, because... The ship's steering problem appears to be mechanical. The wheel itself would not move easily, but when it did, the ship responded. Therefore, the ship's boosters must still be functional. We will have to use them directly, and that means we must use the blade. On our own ship? It requires testing. This will be its test. Or it could tear the goddamn ship to pieces. We don't even know if it works yet. We have no other option. I'm activating it now. So, uh, how does that thing work? The blade should be able to remotely control nearly any machine for a limited time. Its name comes from the fact that it can cut through digital defense systems in seconds. That's not really what I asked. I do not know how it works, nor do I fully understand how to use it. This, the cure of the crime, even intended as key. We are now operating at the farthest reaches of human understanding. I think only a few of the brightest engineering minds today can make sense of this. Very interesting. That hologram the blade's projecting, that's the carte blanche. The hell are those? They don't look good. These are all of the tears our invader has made in the carte blanche so far. Oh, hell. You seeing what I'm seeing, Sekuliak? Indeed. The tears form a near-perfect spiral. Escaping air from each of these points might cause the ship to spin, which would make evading space to be more difficult. And could make avoiding our crash landing impossible. He wants us to crash on that planet. That appears to be the case. If our enemy continues his pattern, his next attack should be... The garage. Then we set a trap. How are we supposed to trap this thing when we don't even know what it is? Seems like you're the only one here who doesn't know who we're dealing with, Steel. You don't know that it's Ransom. But a trap's our only option anyway. Our invader is picking us off one by one when we're alone. He's thinking like an assassin. And I'll tell you, Steel, from a long career of assassinations, if he finishes whatever he's preparing, it won't matter what we do. The deck will already be stacked, and we'll already be dead. Hmm. We must get to the garage and begin setting our trap quickly. The enemy could strike at any moment. But all that was an hour ago. Now, we're here, in the garage. Steel by the door, Sekuliak and I by the Ruby 7, waiting for Ransom to strike again. Hush, Ruby. You sure these locks will keep the Ruby 7 from going anywhere? I am. Not even the blade could move it. It is physically restricted to the floor, and these bands are thin enough that I doubt our enemy could see them. Though, cutting off our only means of escape does worry me. 
That's the whole point. Now that we know Ransom's endgame is to crash us into that planet, we know two things. One, he needs a getaway. And two, he needs to prevent us from getting away. This is his next stop. He would be familiar with the Ruby 7's controls. He has operated it twice before. Right. Once to bring it back to you, and once with steel. What's your read on him and all this? Juno is a trustworthy person. His loyalty, once placed, is not easily broken. And is that good or bad for us right now? I do not know. <clears throat> Ruby, set engines at light hover, six inches above ground. Perfect. I'll slide under the Ruby. You look busy with your bike facing the wall. I will have to steer the carte blanche with the blade, or our ship is so- It doesn't matter what you're doing, so long as you look distracted. Either Ransom will go for you and I'll get him with the blaster, or he'll go for the Ruby and he'll get the knife. Nowhere vital. I'll do my best. You will succeed. We do not know where our invader has hidden Buddy and Rita. If they are alive- Of course they're alive! We will need his help to find them. And if it is Ransom, I think any chance you and Juno might have of working together will be destroyed if you kill him. I don't care! And Buddy said you must cooperate if we are to succeed. Uh, fine. Still, we're just about done here! How did things look over- Hey, hang on. What the hell is Steel doing? He appears to be using his comms. He does, doesn't he? But who- Steel! The hell do you think you're doing? Oh, uh, I, I was just... Never mind, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it? We're fighting for our lives, you stupid... <gasps> Sikoliak, you hear that? Reverberations from inside the left wall of the garage. Did you hear anything else? Nope. Did, did you two just hear... Shh! <sighs> Alright, places. Stay quiet. We don't want Ransom to know what we're up to. I'm under the Ruby 7. You tell Juno to unseal the door and hide in the hall. You work on your bike and the blade. From the sound of it, you've got 30 seconds. Go! <clears throat> See, Kuliak gets it done in 20, like I knew he would. Then he's off to the side of the room, but he's working on the hover cycle less than I'd like. The blade's taking its focus. He pokes at the hologram hovering in the air, and I feel the ship's thrusters rumbling in my feet. I'll trust that's what Sikuliak needs to do. I like Sikuliak. He doesn't say more than he has to. He doesn't lie. And he's usually right. The opposite of steel in every way, basically. And now my mind's racing. You know who I was calling, right, Vespa? Only one reason I could have been using my comms. Moron. Shut up, shut up, shut up! But you went through with it anyway. Not taking my comms away is gonna get at least you killed. Probably the big guy, too. <sighs> too bad you didn't retire yesterday. Or last week. Their buddy could have found some security worth a damn. Now it's too late. She's dead, and soon you will be too. Vespa. God damn it, shut up! Just having you around killed her. You could make believe you were the old Vespa for a little while, but now that time is up. Vespa, there's something in the floor. It already got checked. No, it didn't. Sikuliak's fine. Just get out of my head. Get out of my head! Get her ransom with pleasure. Vespa, I think it's right beneath you. <gasps> It's close. Oh boy. Vespa, get out of there! I don't know how long I was lost in the voices, but over there by the wall, Sikuliak is sitting on his bike, trying to wrap a bandage around his leg and missing over and over again. Steel's in the doorway, staring at the floor, and then I hear the noise from underneath me again. It almost gets me that time, but now I can see it. Something like a cross between a drill and a syringe spraying clear chemical from the tip. Is that ever poison? I don't know. Either way, I have to get it out of the Sikuliak as fast as I can. Get off the ground. I don't think he liked me getting out of this car, Sikuliak. Still, he's still under the floor heading your way. Get out to that crate. Gotcha. It just went down the hall. Damn it! Still, what the hell do you think you're doing? I'm going after it. I, I have to see. It picks us off when we're alone. What don't you get about that? I know. I, 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 I don't care. It sounds like it's moving through the vents. I have to see it. Fine, but we're going with you. Sikuliak, can you stand? I feel I could raise myself to my feet. But I do not feel I could stay there long. Duh. I'll have to take a blood scan, then stop off at the med bay, grab the right antivenom. <sighs> the duck work ends here. 
wants to go any further, it'll have to climb out. Still! Just keep an eye on him for now, but don't leave my sight, got it? We'll hunt him down later! It's coming out, I can almost see. Still? Still! I... I... I it's gone. Damn! Ah. Oh, shut up! Did you see where he went, anyway? Or hear it? Speak up, damn it! I can't hear you! I said... I said I don't think you want to know the answer to that, Vespa. Well, I think I do, so just tell us. Why... Why wouldn't you want that answer, Juno? Because it wasn't Ransom climbing out of that vent. It was Buddy. The only toxin I find in Sekuliak's bloodstream is a sedative. That gives me my first hope in a while. I use the blood scanner in my first aid kit and figure out what family of knockout drug we're looking at, and then it's just a matter of picking out the right treatment. Sorry, sleepyhead, this might hurt. <laughs> Thank you, Vespa. Given the kind of synth opiate we're looking at, and the chemical cocktail I put together, Sekuliak should be back at him in an hour. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I hope it's less. The steel situation's getting out of hand. Let me out of here, Vespa! I'm telling you, I saw Buddy. I know it sounds nuts, but it's the truth. And if we don't figure this out together, we're all sunk. And as much as I'd like to shoot him out the airlock, then shoot him a few more times for good measure. I know better than to do that without a second opinion. Best but we're sitting ducks here. If we don't stick together... Then, then what? Buddy's gonna crawl out a wall and choke us to death. Ha <laughs> ha That's a real great school alibi, Steel. You should have stuck to the law because you make a lousy con. I don't know if it was really Buddy, all right? Changing your story that quickly, huh? Very convincing. But Buddy is definitely who I saw! Something weird is going on in this ship, Vespa. Really weird, and I don't You're know- damn it. right something's weird. It's you, and it's that thief, and I don't know anything about your secretary, but I'm willing to bet we can throw her in there too! Come on, Vespa, I know you don't like- Liking but... you's got nothing to do with it. I know what you did. I saw you do it. Before we sprung our trap, you were on your comms, and you were calling him. Ransom. You were calling him and telling him our plan, so that he could take us out without breaking a sweat, because you two are in this together to pay his debts. I was not calling him. Then why were you on your comms, huh? Because Buddy- if you blame one more thing on Buddy, I'm gonna come in there and turn you inside out, Steel! Well, she did, all right? Same thing as what Jet's been hearing through my wall. Ransom and I were having trouble, uh, you know, talking to each other about everything, so Buddy's been giving us advice. <laughs> A tag team assault on the entire ship seemed like just the date to get everything back on track, right? She said it seems like I'm talking to myself and just never say anything out loud, like these big long speeches to myself about I don't know what or why, but if I wanted to get any better at talking about myself, I should start trying to say that stuff out loud, record it on my comms, that kind of thing. So then she told me she wasn't my therapist again, and you know, every time she says that, I buy it a little less. Oh, drop it! How stupid do you think I am? Nobody likes the sound of their own voice that much. Okay, rude, and also that's not even true. So why were you really on your comms, Steel? Just tell me! Never were on your comms. Unless you think I just hallucinated it all. Huh? Well? I wait for him to take the bait. Sekuliak saw him on his comms too, so I know what happened. All Steel has to do is convince me I'm nuts, just like he's always wanted to. Nutcase. Someone ought to keep her on a About leash. time we got rid of Vespa. Steel? You're making a mistake, Vespa. That's all I'll say. <laughs> but you still have time to fix it. Something's going on Done and we listening. can- Thanks. Brig sound off. And another thing, why does this dumb ship have a brig? Isn't it like a converted tour ship or something? Damn it, Vespa, answer- <sighs> The ship's gone quiet. So's my head for the first time in a while. I've got nothing to do except wait and count down the minutes until Sekuliak wakes up. 
45, 50, 55. It's just three minutes left to the hour when I hear her down the hall. Vespa, Vespa, where are you? Buddy? Vespa, Vespa. She comes around the corner and the feeling in my gut reminds me that this is the first time I've seen her all day. Because I just fell in love with her all over again. Just like I do first thing every morning when I turn and see Buddy Orinko there beside me. Darling. Buddy. <laughs> She's still in her pajamas, God damn it. The long black silk pants I stole for her years ago, and thinking about how Ransom must have drugged her and snatched her when she was still half asleep, still wearing her pajamas, brings the taste of blood up in my throat. I'm gonna kill him. I don't care what Sekuliak says. When I see Ransom again, I'm gonna kill him. Vespa, you must come with me right away. But, but still. Sikuliak. We can take care of Juno together later. And Jed is in no danger, love, because I have Ransom cornered. What? I escaped from him and locked him in his own trap. But he's slippery, Vespa. We both know that. And you have to come help me take care of him immediately. Right, of course. <clears throat> Show me where he is. This way. Hurry. We leave Sikuliak and steal behind. We walk the halls for one minute, maybe two. And at the end of a hallway, I see something that makes me close my eyes and shake my head again. But the image won't go. A passage the size of a door has been ripped into the wall. Bent and half-melted metal flaps twist outward and rusty red light pulses on the other side. It, it looks organic, like a hole in the side of an animal. Like the warrant of some bio-glowing vermin like we had in the swamps of Ringa. Don't stick your head down there, boy. Big things underground. Big, hungry things. Don't slow down, darling. He's just ahead. That's where you escaped from? He's been traveling through the walls. Rita's there, too. But he, he cut an opening big enough for you to just walk out? We can't possibly understand how a madman and assassin thinks, Vespa. And attempting the feat is only giving him time to escape. Please, quickly. But we can understand how an assassin thinks... I can, because the problem with a plan that relies on getting each victim alone and taking them out one by one is that eventually the victims will notice you're doing it. Eventually they'll refuse to leave each other's sight, and your only option then is to split them up. Or make them split themselves up. Make them distrust each other. Lure them away from the group. Get in the hole, Vespa Ilke. Error. Long range controls destabilized. Repairing. Repairing. Sikuliak! This creature is strong! Neutralizing Jet Sikuliak. You must get no. to it! Ah! Eliminated the intro. It is safe to come out now. Vespa? Our assassin got impatient. That's the only explanation I could think of for why they'd leave Sekuliak lying in the hallway like that, while they walk off looking just like him. Only reason they wouldn't check for me, in obvious hiding places, too. Like that glowing hole in the wall they were trying to trap me in. <laughs> and impatience means one of two things. Either our enemy is running out of time, or it thinks it's already won this fight. But I won't let it. 
He was headed towards Steel Cell, so now I am too. Every nasty voice and vision is on my heels now. Every one of them is waiting for their turn to tell me how badly I messed this up. How I never should have been let on this ship in the first place. Isn't that embarrassing? Vespa's condition is not relevant. Never pays to think you should get more than you're given. And maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I am washed up. But you know what? Those voices have had the stage for a long, long time. Now it's my turn. Steel, you all right in there? Steel. What? Uh, sorry, I dozed off. You uh, ready to let me out now or what? I'm coming in. About time. Where's the big guy? You haven't seen him? Uh, if I did what I've asked? Sekuliak's passed out in the hallway. What? It looks like our enemy got him. And right after that, she came this way. She? You, you don't mean... <clears throat> it was Buddy. Or something that looked like Buddy, anyway. I heard her say something about a disguise, but I didn't get a good look at it. She got Jet? I can't believe- Ah! What the hell was that? Space junk. How close are we to that planet? Closer than I'd like. And the blade? I checked Sekuliak's pockets. Buddy must have taken it. Then we have to catch her right now, don't we? I don't know if the person sitting in front of me is really Juno Steel. I can imagine both options easy enough. Either A, our shape-shifting assassin takes Sekuliak's skin, gets Steel alone, then takes his form and stows him away so it can finish me off. Or B, it knows it doesn't have enough time, so it walks towards Steel but never gets him, thinking we'll take each other out instead. It's a neat and tidy plan. Reminds me of some of my best. <laughs> Back when I was worth something. And that's why I can't tell Steel I know what this shapeshifter can do. Because this thing is a good assassin. Same as I was. So I know how it thinks. It's prepared for every possibility. That means it has a plan for taking us all down if it gets discovered. And as soon as I tell it I know it can transform, it'll put that plan into motion. If this is the assassin, not the real Juno Steel. So here we are in between possibilities. Have I discovered it or not? Is it steel or not? Neither one of us sure which plan we use now. A few more hits like that and we're done for. We have to get the blade. Did you see where buddy, where that thing went? We have to go after- Sit back down, steel. What? Vespa, we're gonna die if we Sit don't- Sit down. going wherever it wants to drag us for hours now, and it's winning. So cool your head, think, and when we come up with a plan, we'll move. I... I can't believe we... <sighs> Fine. But you better think fast, Vespa, or we'll all explode together, one big flammable family. I am thinking fast. It's all I've got left. I always hated messy jobs. Knowing every detail ahead of time, running them all through my head, that was more my speed. Got other things running in my head now. Kill it. Vespa, save me! It never pays to think you should get more than you're given. So like it or not, everything's messy now. Guess that means I'll have to learn a whole new bag of tricks. Like how to think on my feet. Damn it, Vespa, you wanna die, is that it? Well, you have fun with that. I'm gonna do something about it. Where are you going, Steel? To look for the blade. Get out of my way. Where are you looking for it? I already told you Sekuliak didn't have it. Well, who's to say you even saw Jet, huh? You see things all the time that aren't there, so forgive me if I'm not exactly convinced. You're nuts, Vespa. Let someone else decide if we all die, all right? I'm gonna go look for myself. You're on your own. Got you. What are you... <laughs> Vespa Ilke, we could have taken you all alive. Who could have? A pity, pit, 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 pit. Signal lost. More train infiltrator shutting down. Damn it! 
Just a bot? What the hell? The blade. Come on, come on. Don't let it be too late, please. Yes. Now, what the hell does any of this mean? I can't read the blade too well, but I can tell what it's showing isn't good. The carte blanche covered in holes. The ghost of its hologram floating on the other side of the planet's rings now. But so close to the planet itself, it's starting to burn in the atmosphere. We're going to crash. I picked the bot out because I trusted what I knew, and I knew Steel wouldn't call me crazy. Wish I'd known that before. And buddy, all our time together was so, so small compared to our time apart. What a waste. That's all it is, a waste. I wish it were last night again. I wish I could hold her and talk to her. I wish I'd known that before we- If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you'll receive access to commentary tracks like this one from actors Chloe Cunha and Noah Symes and co-creator Sophie Takagi Gamer. Yeah, and it's very much inspired by the Twilight Zone episode Terror at 2000 Feet. Um, for those who are not familiar, um, it takes place all on a plane, and this guy has just had like a huge mental breakdown, and he's flying it's home. William Shatner, right? Yeah. 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 And he's flying home on the plane, and he sees like a Yeti. <laughs> it's it hilarious. Is it is hilarious. Yeah. Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, pins, and socks your hearts desire. Just go to dftba.com and search for the Penumbra podcast. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Minchowski. Nereev is snatched even when he's an alien. T posing on a spaceship to impress Juno. Insane Sammy. Tiny Demon Dragon. Peter Ransom being rude ASMR. Ko. Miasma is a MILF. Lynn Go. N.B. Shaper, Jasper James, Caroline Seidman, This Is My Contribution to Small Fry's College Fund, Red L, Kim Dauber, J. Yanuzeli, Karen Z.H., and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. This tale, Juno Steele and the Shadows on the Ship, was told by the following people. Chloe Cunha as Vespa Ilke, Joshua Elon as Juno, Alexander Stravinsky as Jet, Sarah Gazdovich as Buddy, Noah Symes as Ransom, and Mertz as Vespa's father. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Takagi Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid that is our time for today, dear travelers. We hope you will join us again soon.